Today I'll introduce you to my EZ-58 rifle. I'll first introduce you to uh, its history, talk about some facts, show you the ergonomics and operations, we'll field strip the rifle to look at the insides, then I'll talk about the upgrades I did to this rifle and explain why I did those. So first of all, this rifle entered service in 1959 in the Czech army, and that was about the time when the Warsaw Pact countries were basically forced to adapt to standardized uh, ammunitions, and for the assault rifles that was uh, 762 by 39 so what the AKM uses. Uh, while this rifle looks very similar to an AK rifle, at least for the, I'd say, untried eye, uh, it has some big differences, uh, we'll go into those in detail. While the BZ-58 has different um, variations, there was one with a fixed buttstock, that one with the folding buttstocks for uh, obviously vehicle crews or paratroopers, same as the AKMS with the folding stock or you even had the underfolders in some countries. Uh, they had that. Interestingly enough, CSA now makes obviously still new VZ-58s with uh, different configurations. They have one with a shorter barrel and one with a teeny tiny barrel, and I'll show you pictures of that. <laughs> I was able to shoot one in 762 by 39 and it's, uh, it just it looks like a dragon, so big fireballs, not very controllable, but very fun. Uh, they also have it chambered in 556, so that might be an option for you too if you don't like 762 by 39 or uh, need a weapon with ammo readily available and cheap, that might be a thing for you too. Uh, they use different magazines, obviously, most of the parts are then interchangeable with the 7.62x39 variants. So the first difference is, um, comparing it to an AKM, it weighs in about 2.9 kilos, while the AKM uh, weighs in about 3.3 kilos. And that has uh, partially to do with the shorter barrel. So the barrel here is a uh, 15.4 inch, while the AK uses a 16.3 inch barrel. And the VZ, uses a locking block, and we'll see that, instead of the rotating bolt that the AK uses, and it has a short stroke gas piston instead of a long stroke gas piston. So the VZ is uh, succeeded by the CZ805 Bren, at least in the Czech army, and the Slovak army still partially uses the VZ58, but is also planning uh, to adopt the Bren. So first of all, let's look at the magazines, and this is a VZ58 mag, this is an AK mag, and as you can tell, uh, they look similar, but they're different. Uh, none of the parts of the VZ-58 is actually interchangeable with the AKM. So, uh, the Czechs didn't adopt the AKM, like many Warsaw Pact countries, but they kind of did their own thing while using the 7.62x39 round. So, interesting choice. Uh, the AK mag is made of uh, steel, and the VZ mag is made out of aluminium. And this is obviously a big difference in weight, and I'll demonstrate this. So the VZ mag weighs in about 184 grams, and the AK mag basically weighs double at 334 grams. So while they're made out of aluminium, they're actually very durable. So this is a surplus mag. I don't know exactly how old it is. It's probably uh, the same age as I am, and it held up very well, and they're pretty robust, so good choice uh, by the Czech comparison, the AK mags. So another difference is um, the receiver is actually milled uh, from one big piece, as you can see, one nice piece. The AKM, at least, stamped, and uh, the AK-47, the OG AK, was actually milled too, but then uh, due to the labor-intensive uh, machining parts and the tooling required and the resources, you need more resources, right? Uh, they changed to stamp with AKM and stuck uh, to stamped, rece uh, stamped receivers since then. Now, since this uses a short-stroke gas piston, I'll show you when we pull back the bolt actually has a lost round bolt hold open, which the AKs don't, unless you use a Yugo AK. And you can see, since it's short stroke, we don't have a gas piston attached to the bolt, as the AK does. You have a huge uh, ejection port here, so clearing malfunctions is very easy. And just in comparison, if you're not familiar with the AK, you have, um, if you pull back the bolt, you have a smaller uh, 
protection port and you can't really see what's going on since it has the dust cover above and if we remove the dust cover you can see the gas piston is actually connected to the bolt so that's why it's called a long stroke gas piston so that's a difference big difference in operation now if you look at uh, another nice feature when it comes to loading the rifle you can't only use magazines but you can use stripper clips <laughs> to load the rifle so uh, they use SKS stripper clips and I guess they had uh, tons of them lying around so you insert it into this groove you have the ammo loaded to the stripper clip um, actually I'm just going to demonstrate this to you so you have the rounds in here and they hold you have 10 rounds you shove it in here and then you can use your thumb to press them into the magazine but I don't want to do that I don't want live ammo here during the video so you do this three times and you loaded 30 rounds in your mag and you're good to go so if you have a pouch with already preloaded stripper clips that might be a nice thing right depending on the doctrine nowadays with uh, modern load bearing gear probably just gonna rock five or six of those lightweight mags so inserting the magazines is actually very AK like although they're not interchangeable you rock them in just like an AK you get this click and this is the tab to release the mag similar to the AK press and you can remove the mag so another big difference is the operations of the safety this is the safety lever so this is safe you flip up and you're good to go fire safe obviously if you have a full auto you would have a third position and just to recall this is the AK safety lever so you disengage the safety put it in uh, semi this would be full auto if you had a full auto and this is safe so ergonomic wise it's actually a bit of an improvement you have the last round bolt hold open and you just pull back on the bolt and it will charge the next round if you inserted the next uh, full mag so uh, other features let's look at the front sight is very AK like we all know this system but it's actually not in changeables because checks being checks and the front side <coughs> also very AK like it's hooded and you can adjust it uh, windage and height by turning it so simple and very similar to the AK and talking about similarities the muzzle device is very similar to you have um, this little pin here you detent it and then you can unscrew the muzzle device very reminiscent of uh, the AK. Interestingly enough, uh, the thread on this is a uh, 14 by one right hand side, <laughs> while the AKM uses 14 by one left hand side. So they really didn't want any <laughs> interchangeable parts. I'm sure they had their reasons. So talking about the front side block, um, you have this little rail here for use of a bayonet. I unfortunately don't have a compatible bayonet to show you but uh, that was a standard feature uh, during this time. So, other than that, uh, nothing special to write home about. Now we'll uh, field strip the rifle to check uh, the stuff inside. So first of all is to remove the optics. Not all of them had a side rail, if I'm not mistaken. These have one, so very similar to the AK side rails and the mounts, but guess they're not interchangeable remove the side rail, we'll flip the rifle upwards, we have this pin, we push on it, you can remove it, it's actually captive, so very nice, you can't lose it in the field, you push on the dust cover and it won't open, so if the rifle's cocked, you'll have to first make sure it's empty, drop the trigger, and now you can actually remove it, so there you go, it comes right out. We have the dust cover with the two operation springs, you can now pull back on the bolt assembly and will come off the rails in the rearward position. It's actually four parts, so first of all, let's remove this striker <coughs> and the bolt assembly can be disassembled further. So we have those four parts. You can see the bolt face has a free floating firing pin and um, it's not rotating, but it kind of uh, locks into place with this part so now we're gonna remove the gas piston another pin here and remove the upper hand guard very simple 
Got the gas piston, so a short stroke with uh, its operation spring. So what this does, it gets the gas from the barrel here. It just hits the whole bolt assembly. While it's not connected, this will cycle the whole action. And you have this big ejection port here. So short stroke in comparison, the AK has long stroke as we've seen before. So putting it back together, very easy. Just grab the piston, drop it in there, grab the hunt guard, hooks on the gas port, secure it with the pin, like so. Put the bolt back together, so these two parts. Uh, drop it in here and you can see the locking motion here. So those two tabs will lock the whole bolt uh, in the forward position, then we'll grab striker here, has a cutout, have to rotate it, like so, and that holds the bolt assembly in one piece. Drop it in the rails, and as you can see now, <clears throat> this striker here is held back by the trigger, so if they pull the trigger, it would fly forward due to the spring, uh, hit and will cause the firing pin to go forward and trigger the whole the whole action. So the only remotely difficult part of putting it back together is getting those two springs in the corresponding holes, uh, like so. Get it in there, push the dust cover into place. You need to make sure that it's in the rails on both sides, and that's your field strip. So. Uh, very easy to take apart and clean, very easy to uh, get rid of malfunctions, if it should malfunction, but it's a very reliable system, just as the AK is. Put our optics back on there. And there you go, that's all there is to it. So, a bit more ergonomic, uh, I would say more sophisticated, due to it being uh, milled and uh, the, the features we just saw and uh, a bit lighter than the AKM. So, now let's look at the upgrades I did to this particular rifle. Uh, we'll start with the most important one, that is uh, every rifle should have a sling if you're going to use it, uh, not only on the range, let's say. So I have this uh, two-point sling. I mounted it in the rear with the Magpul stock and some paracord, and in the front with the actual sling loop here. I uh, didn't want metal on metal, so there's just this small paracord that just makes the whole thing more flexible and I don't have uh, the sound of metal, scratching on metal all the time when I move. So, sling. Uh, the second very important part is the flashlight. And this is a Phoenix flashlight. The same setup I have on my AK. Same flashlight, same mount. Uh, very important and you don't need the flashlight only at night or low light situations, but also if you go inside of a bill, it won't be uh, bright as outside. So, important thing to have. And now I'll just have to make a short uh, detour. The CSA, the company that made this particular VZ rifle, sells them in a sporterized version. Uh, so, it came with this handguard, I did not upgrade it. So, it's nice, it has uh, already Picatinny rails on the bottom and the top and optionally on the side here, which is nice to mount accessories. And it comes with a, a AR-15 buttstock adapter. It came with the M4 buttstock, the M4 style, but I really hate those. Uh, the ergonomics aren't the best too, so I replaced it with the Magpul one. I had a folding buttstock, but actually broke it, so I can't really recommend them. This uh, is something tested and just works. So that was, uh, let's say, the third upgrade. Replaced it with this Magpul one. You can change the distance, the length of pull. If you want to transport it, you can make it very compact too. Uh, you can also use risers if you need them with optic. So, essential upgrade for better ergonomics, let's say. The fixed wooden or uh, Bakelite stocks they had might look nice, but uh, not very not very ergonomic, especially if you're a bit taller. Uh, judging the people in 1960 uh, eating not very well were quite a bit smaller too, so it doesn't really work nowadays. Uh, the next upgrade was 
using uh, some kind of some front grip. So I'm using this angled foregrip here just because it makes it very comfy to shoot, a bit more controllable if you're using uh, high rates of fire, especially with 762 by 39 And it's pretty decent because I can hold the rifle like this and I can reach around to engage the flashlight. I'm not using any pressure pads because most of the time I just bump into them and uh, light discipline is a thing too, right? So uh, angle foregrip, I had a, a vertical foregrip but then it got into the way of magazine changes because you have to rock them and this has the clearance so it's a good option for the VZ. At least for me it works out very well. Then uh, let's say the last upgrade was getting a side rail. So this is from CSA, the company that made the rifle. And very AK-like, you get a pick rail on top. And what I'm rocking here is a rather obscure choice of optic. Uh, you might know it as a Rack Horse or the 1P76. So it's an optic by NPZ and uh, has seen some action. This is, uh, I bought this back when you were actually able to, <laughs> to buy Russian military gear very cheap on sites like eBay. Uh, corruption, I guess. But uh, very nice for collectors. While this isn't the best modern optic, it um, works pretty well. It's uh, built like a tank. It's rather heavy too. And you get a 1x, so no magnification, but you get tritium sights and um, just allows you to engage uh, targets on bigger distances. And target acquisition is better, obviously, than iron sights. So obviously uh, some kind of EOTech would be better, but uh, I just like obscure optics too, so that's, that's my thing. This is actually the Rack Horse PM. Uh, regular rock horse comes with uh, the optic integrated to the side rail for the AKs. This is just with a Picatinny, so it makes sense to mount it on here. Uh, well, not might be anything like historically accurate. It looks pretty, pretty cool. So that's the optic and the last upgrade to this rifle. So with all of these things, I just improved the ergonomics, made the whole system a bit more modern, a bit more capable. It's an interesting, interesting firearm. Most users, I uh, think, are Canadians because they're not allowed to have AKMs because AK bad. So they have uh, VZs and um, it's just a nice thing to add to your collection. And it's just as reliable as the AK, in my opinion. It has its pros and cons, um, but a very nice piece of uh, history too. So. If you have any questions about this rifle or the upgrades, just let me know. And uh, as always, have fun.